resting on a bit of the Tribune. Our most practical paper tonight. I rather like it, sir. Remind me to renew my subscription. That won't be necessary, sir. And why not? Well, because uh, a check for your subscription is already in the post, sir. Ah, uh, Tenny, you think of everything, don't you? I, uh, try to, sir. Then think of some way to rescue my package. There, sir, as they say in the books, you have me, sir. Is one of my American cousins in the crowd? What's your name? Drummond, Captain Hugh C. Drummond. I ain't got no cousins for that name, but I'm an American, all right. Ah, fine. Then may I borrow a piece of your chewing gum? Sure. Thank you. Don't mention it. Are you all right, sir? Quite all right, Denny. Now, sir, may I borrow your stick? Thank you. <laughs> an excellent idea, though. Colossal, Tenny. One might almost say stupendous, sir. Careful, sir. Got it. Now, thank you, sir. Have an idea. My friend, I'm going to become a chewing gum fiend. Keeps the teeth nice and white. See? Oh, how interesting. Here. Well, thank you. Don't mention it. Here you are, Tony. Thank you, sir. Not bad, eh? I rather like it so. Say, mister, what's in that package? Wedding rings. Well, now that we have them, Tenny, suppose we make a final check. Very well, sir. To begin with, I have the rings. No, sir, I have the rings, sir. Ah, you have the rings. In my pocket, sir. The marriage papers? In your pocket, sir. Authorization for your wedding in Switzerland. Railway tickets? Car 7, London to Paris Express, leaving Victoria Station tonight. Flowers? Orchids, sir, to be placed in Miss Phyllis' compartment at 9.50 p.m. Hotel accommodations. Paris tomorrow morning at 9.50, sir. Two suites. The following day in Geneva. One, sir. Ah, Tony, getting married is great fun, isn't it? In Switzerland, sir? Anywhere, Tony, anywhere. It's a popular belief, sir. Tony, you're a pessimist. I've been very happy, sir. Captain Drummond. Yes, Tony. When one is through with it, what does one do with it? Let's see. When one is done with it, what does one do with it? Oh, it's not a riddle. No, then what is it? It's an academic inquiry so as to how one disposes of one's chewing gum. Now I see. Yeah, that does require thought. Yes. Don't trouble, sir. And why not? I've swallowed it, sir. Well, Tenny, that's one way. Well, hardly the right way, do you think so? Well, time will tell. Well, speaking of time, sir. Is it 4.30? I'm to call for Colonel Nielsen at Scotland Yard. Good afternoon, Captain Drummond. I'm time to the dock. Colonel Nielsen will be delayed a few moments. I'll wait. And this clavering telephone from Rockingham Lodge, shall I get it for you? Yes, would you please? You may use the phone in there. Well, thank you. Rockingham Lodge, please. Hello? Oh, hello, dear. Oh, I've got the rings. Don't lose them. Now, in the first place, you called me... To tell you that Gwen... Asked you to tell me... That Algie would meet you at Colonel Nielsen's office and you could all come out... Together. All right, darling. See you soon. 
General Nielsen will see you in just a moment. Uh, thank you. Sumio Kanda. Hugh Drummond. Well, seven years haven't changed you. No, are you, my dear friend. And the English is more perfect than ever. Due largely to our most present scholastic association. Ah, that's the talk of a diplomat. That is kind. Are you? Am I? A diplomat. I see you have not forgotten. What? To ask questions. Goodbye, Colonel. No, thank you. Not at all, sir. I got over to the Foreign Office immediately. Very good, sir. Mr. Kanda, Colonel Nielsen. How'd you do, sir? Uh, just a few minutes, Jim. You step in, Mr. Kanda. You'll forgive me? Of course. Go right ahead. I trust my visit will not upset your plans. Your plans are made to be upset, aren't they? That is so. That is why I am here. To try and upset some plans. Hmm. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know who and uh, what I am? Of course. We understand each other then. Between us, representing in a separate way, the interest of two friendly nations. There need to be no evasion. That is so? Quite. Then I'll tell you something of a great importance. Concerning? Sir John Huxton. How do you know? How I know is not of importance. Sir John Huxton has invented a super explosive, an ultra powerful combination of destructive elements for use in airplane bombs. He's leaving today for France to confer with munition chemist of your great ally. That is so? Go on. An attempt will be made to steal the portion of experimental supply he's taking with him. How do you know this? Uh, please, a single airplane carrying a hundred small bombs loaded with this devastating force could destroy any capital in the world. Has it ever occurred to you, my dear Mr. Kanda, that espionage might be a rather dangerous pastime? Now is not time for accusation or recriminations. My country and your country too, are in great danger if Sir John's discovery falls into unfriendly hands. Suppose I were to tell you there's no such thing as this explosive. We agreed not to evade. Please, I'm a friend. I wish to cooperate. You told me everything? All that I know. I'll see Sir John at once. Yes, of course. That will be proper. Goodbye. Yes, Colonel? Uh, get Sir John Haxton on the wire at once. Very well, sir. Captain Drummond is waiting. I'll send him in. Ready, Colonel? Oh, I'm sorry, Hugh. I'm afraid you'll have to run along without me. You mean you're not coming to the station with us? I didn't say that. I said you'll have to run along without me. Well, then you will be there. Later, yes, later. What's happened? Happened? Well, some of your Conda came in here. You looked quite human. Mm, implying that now I don't? Definitely. My dear Hugh, this is Scotland Yard. Things do happen here. Things that also happen to be none of your business. Now then, Sumi Okanda's visit was important. Yes, his visit was important. Just like 50 others today were important. Now will you please run along and quit prying into things that don't concern you? Yes, I have Sir John Haxton's home for you, sir. Thanks. Hey. Hello? One moment, please, Colonel Nelson. Sir John is in his laboratory. I'll connect you. to delay it, sir. I'll explain when I get there. Yeah, but it is important. Yes, yes, just as quickly as I can make it. About 20 minutes. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Colonel, it's none of your business. Travis speaking. Uh, have Smith and Jennings meet me at Sir John Haxton's right away, please. Right, sir. Colonel, if you, well, why don't you think about getting married? Instead of tormenting me with your infernal question. I only wanted to tell you that I'd be glad to drop you off at Sir John's. All right, but I warn you not to ask questions. I mean it. Of course you mean it. Right ho, I'll wait here. Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. 
Oh, Colonel, I'm... I know! You're horribly sorry. Yes. Allow me. I phoned Gwenny to tell her, to phone you, to tell her that I'm... Oh, come in, Colonel. Thank you. Shall I put the bags in the car, sir? You may as well. Oh, no, we'll take a special car from the yard. You heard? Yes, sir, John. What's up? There's been a leak somewhere. Your plans are known. How could they be? How about your secretary? No guess? He's been with me for years. Mm. Does he know what you're doing? Yes and no. To keep you happy, I destroyed all my notes. Remember? Mm. Is Nogueis traveling with you? He's my navigator. We're flying in my ship. In an army plane, you mean? You'll be traveling under escort from the moment you leave the house. We can't do that. Why not? I can't risk those army chaps' lives. You're risking your own, aren't you? It's my show. And this stuff's full of jokes. There's enough hexanide in this suitcase to blow Westminster Abbey into the North Sea. Hmm. And uh, one of these. Loaded with this stuff and dropped from a plane, a hundred of those would wipe London off the map. Here, let me show you something. That's a single crystal of hexamide. That little speck? Hold it a second, will you? Hmm. All right, I'll take it now. Come over here, then. Exhibit A. And in case you don't know it, this is a hammer. Exhibit B. Be serious, will you? I am quite serious. Now watch. You see? It didn't go off. That's the trouble with the stuff. It's treacherous. Sometimes it behaves itself. On the other hand, it's liable to go off for no reason at all. And lift a fellow into kingdom come. There you are. Suppose the explosive in that suitcase had decided to let go. More important still. Suppose that suitcase fell into unfriendly hands. That's why you're traveling under escort. Excuse me a moment. Yes? Well, have them wait. Two of your men are here. Mm. We'll go with you to the airport. I'm flying my ship. That's the way you want it. I'd rather. I don't think you're making much ado about nothing. We're taking no chances. Well, goodbye, Colonel. Au revoir. immediately to the authorities at Le Bourget, Paris. Righto, Colonel. If you want to reach me, I'll be at Captain Drummond's in about an hour. Right, Colonel. Rocking log. Here, Rook. What up? Isn't this the wrong road? Shot, Captain. Yes, Algy. Aren't we going a little fast? I want to get there. So do I.
working fast, all right. He said he'd get that suitcase out of the parachute, and there it comes. I'd rather not be around here until next night goes off when it lands. No gaze will be bailing out next. Get to a phone. Tell the boss everything's going okay. Right. speed when he saw us. John Haxton, I'll bet. Huh? This afternoon in Colonel Nielsen's office. Listen. Captain Drummond. Captain Drummond! I see him there. There's nothing we can do now, Algy. Captain Drummond. Ah. Ring on the finger. D.N. Sir John's pilot, I suppose. Well, there's something queer about this. Why, Hugh? Hand cold. Oh, well, that's to be expected, isn't it? Rigor mortis doesn't set in so soon. This is the hand of a man who's been dead at least four hours. Your hand, sir. Uh, yes, a spot of tea. Tea, sir? Yes. Uh, Captain Drummond. Uh, no, but you better have some. Yes, thank you. Algy, this is a clue to something big. I wish we were in on it. Oh, I thought we were. <laughs> now, what's the matter with you? That thing gives me the creeps. Algy, brace up. I don't want Phyllis upset. You! Algy, Algy! What shall I tell Gwen? If you mention a word of what's happened, I'll wring your neck. I could dance. Oh, I want to tell you before Phyllis does. Phyllis talked long distance to her Aunt Blanche at Geneva, and she's giving Phyllis her Swiss chateau for a wedding present. That's very interesting. Oh, you can't go upstairs, and you and Phyllis can't marry until a week after you get to Geneva, because Aunt Blanche slipped on a ski and broke her ankle. <laughs> but that makes it just ducky for us to leave for Geneva on Monday instead of Friday, and then I can have my dress fitted on Saturday. Isn't that perfectly rare? What? What's the matter with you, Elgie? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just a little chill. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, you drumming, dragging Algy Wowgy around in that hotted old car of yours. You come right over here and let me make you all nice and coffee wafty. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Why don't you knock a lady down? That will come after we're married. 
Just a minute, young man. Where on earth have you been? Well, well you see, the, the fog was pretty thick, darling. I thought you were bringing Colonel Nelson. Well, something came up at the yard. He'll be right along. Well, let me see them. Them? The rings. Oh, yes, the rings, of course. The... Well, you haven't lost them. Oh, no, darling, no. I... Well, men always do. Well, I haven't lost them because I remember perfectly well that, that I put them in my pocket, so... Uh, good work, Tenney. I rather the like it, so. There you are, darling. You, it's beautiful. For one of my inexperience, I did all right, huh? You uh, still have time to back out, you know. What do you mean, back out? When we put these on and say, I do, it's the end of your adventuring. No more mysteries, no more dangers, just home and fireside. Yes, but darling... Well, you promised. Oh, yes, I did, didn't I, but... Well... Well, all right, darling. You have my word. The old life is over. Done with forever. There. Isn't that better? Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> uh, there's a hand! A hand? Oh! 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 I'm sorry, old boy. Ouchie! Darling, did I hurt you? No, sweetheart, it was nothing. Did he get away? Who? Oh. I don't know. Gee. Look! Ah! You! You! It's gone! What's gone? The suitcase. But what suitcase? Well, I, I, Tenny's suitcase. Tenny's suitcase? Uh, yes, miss, my suitcase. But why should anyone steal Tenny's suitcase? In the name of my sainted aunt, what's been going on here? Colonel, something's happened. No. Hugh, what'll I do when... Take her upstairs, Algie. Right, though. Hang on, my pet. Now, you'd better go, too, dear. Just a moment, Hugh Drummond. Are you mixed up in something again? Now, Phyllis, if you'll just give me... Is this a sample of what our married life's going to no, be? No, darling, it isn't. I've made a promise and I'm going to keep it. I can, but I've simply got to talk to Colonel Nielsen alone. Please. I give up. Hmm, smart girl. I did that a long time ago. Colonel. But what is it this time? Murder. But there's a body, of course. It's about ten miles from here, in what remains of an aeroplane. You! Phyllis told me to tell you... Later, Algie, later. In an aeroplane, you say? Sir John Haxton's. It crashed? It not only crashed, Colonel, it exploded. It, uh, it was an accident, Hugh. Yes, but Colonel... Sir John had a suitcase containing Haxonite. A powerful explosive. Treacherous stuff. So much so, in fact, that the slightest jar at times would set it off. That's what exploded. It, it was, was in a suitcase? Hmm. What's the matter with you idiots? We had that suitcase here. Here? So we were tossing it around like a football. Where is it now, man? Where is it now? It was stolen about a minute before you arrived. Hello? Hello? Hello, Scotland Guard, please. Well, clear the wire and get them. This is Colonel Nielsen speaking. Uh, the Rocking of Lodge. Colonel, huh? whose initials are D.N.? Draven Gay, Saxton secretary. Was he with Sir John? Yes. Well, then he did it. Here, look at this. Take it easy. You want this stuff to blow up? What time is it? Seven o'clock. I owe Drummond something for this. So to make it appear that he'd been killed too, Nogais put his ring on this, wherever he got it, and then bailed out in a chute after he'd dumped the Haxonite overboard. For once, I think you're right. Colonel. Huh? Nogais has some scratches on his cheek, which I gave him during our fight. Hello? Hello? Nielsen speaking. Put me through to Jennings, out of the way, please. Algie, where are you? Not a word, Algie, do you hear me? Hello. I'll put this in your overcoat pocket, Colonel. Oh, hello, Jennings. Got out an order for the arrest of Graven Nogais, right away, please. Did you tell him? I forgot. Forgot what, Algie? You old boy. Well, Algie, out with it. Phyllis told me to tell you that... Oh, well, there you are, darling. 
Well, what's the matter? I, I've changed my mind. You've what? I thought it over and I... She's not going to marry you. That's what she told me to tell you. Now we can't go to Geneva. <laughs> Darling, you're joking. I'm not. But why, Phyllis, why? He's been just one thing after another since the day we met. Darling, that's all over. Oh, no, it isn't. Well, on, on the very night we leave to get married, uh, the lights go out and, and there's a fight and, and suitcases disappear. Well, now, Phyllis, please. I want a home and, and not so much excitement. Now, sweetheart, if you... The sun is up, Phyllis. I've got to go. See you in Geneva next week. What are you crying about? Her heart's broken, that's what. Oh. Hugh, <coughs> Hugh, what do I do? Teddy! Coming, Teddy! Uh. Gwen. Gwen, my pet. Thank you. Here, dear, drink this. Thank you, Tenny. Phyllis, you didn't mean it, did you? Oh, I suppose not. But I warn you, if anything happens... Oh, nothing will happen, dear. How could it? Oh, darling. You! Oh, later, Elsie, I'm busy. Tenny! Coming, sir. Well, hurry, hurry. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Luggage were to go to Miss Clavering's compartment, number one, forward. I'm sorry, sir. Please get it right this time. Right you are, sir. I'll tip you with Bilbo. Thank you, sir. I beg your pardon. Teddy. Yes, Mr. Longworth. Look. An alarm clock. Set for two o'clock in the morning. But why, sir? To wake him up. We Captain Drummond up so. <laughs> when they did it to me, I almost jumped out of my pajamas. Well, it's, it's a joke, don't you see? Not very clearly. It's supposed to be funny. If you insist so. Ha <laughs> ha. Excuse me. I pass, please. Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. I beg your pardon. I'm 
beg your pardon. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, I'm an inspector. And I came in here to... Uh, to inspect. Good night. Started, hasn't it? Right, sir. Oh, ticket, please. Yeah, ticket, if you please, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I haven't any. Well, then I have to sell you one, I'm afraid. Uh, space. Compartment eleven, Miss Carl. Straight through, sir, or to Dover only? No. I can phone Gwen at Dover, can't I? Oh yes, I should think so. Oh, all right. That horse-faced friend of Drummond's is on the train. Drummond is too in the compartment next to mine. Do you think they're onto us? Horse faces, you call them, is onto you. I put them snooping. Algy! Algy! You, it's on the train. It's on the train? Yes, what are we going to do? Well, what are you talking about, Algy? What's on the train? The suitcase. So, the suitcase is on the train. Well, how do you know? I saw him. Saw whom? No gaze. The man with the scratches. I might have known it. Wait a moment, darling. If what Algy says is the truth, we're in danger. The whole train's in danger. You can just warn me. It's my own fault. Proceed once. Well, I got on the train, but I didn't want to get on the train when the train was going, yes, because Norman tells you to stick to the man with the scratches. It's all right for you not to worry. They don't know you. You're safe, especially in that get-up you're wearing. But what about me? These scratches have got me pegged. Well, if they find out you weren't killed in Haxton's plane, Drummond will probably think I'm you. That is possible, isn't it? Sure puts me in a spot. Half a million almost in our hands, and this had to happen. You know, my friend, you have given me an idea. What? Did you hear something? I don't hear it. Hugh, this isn't your affair. Darling, it is my affair. I told you what Colonel Nielsen said. There's more at stake than just our lives. Our lives aren't important. Oh, naturally they are, but, but don't you understand? Somebody's got to see it through. Your mind made up? Of course. All right, then. I'm in on it, too. I'll go to my compartment. You'll stay right here until we get to Dover. I'll do nothing about Right in this room. Your gun, Tom. Oh, you brought them along. Just in case, sir. Oh, an excellent idea, Tenney. I thought you might like it, Tom. One for you, sir. This is a thing. But what about yourself? And it's all there are, sir. There are to be more. Well, then you better stay here. Very good, sir. Come on, Well, I don't see you again. Goodbye. It's been so nice knowing you. Relax, darling, relax. Come on, Algie. We're going into conference with Mr. Daven Nogueus. appear to be in. Lock the door, Algie. Suicide. Well, the game was up, Algie. He couldn't take it. There may be Haxonite in there. Ha! Ah. Is that it? That's it, Elsie. Well, what are you going to do? Hand it over to the authorities at Dover, I hope.
Elsie, do you smell perfume? Yes. That's odd, don't you think? I've smelled worse. Oh, I mean, for a man to use perfume. Why wasn't you a chap? Elsie! What? Perhaps this isn't suicide. Huh? You mean a woman? Why not? Did she use the perfume we smell in here? You mean the woman who found me in there? Well, who else did you think I meant? I don't know. Well, did she? I just told you. You just told me what? I don't know. We'll soon find out. How? By knocking politely on her door and... Phyllis won't like it. Yes, but if somebody killed us, she fellow, still won't like it. You made a promise in case you've forgotten. Oh, you're right, Elsie. We'll hang on to this until we get to Dover. And then forget it, eh? Right. Oh. Jumpy. Relax, darling, relax. If, well, if someone did kill Nogace, and they find out that you have that bag... Nothing's going to happen. I, I hope you're right, but I think the chances are against it. What? Oh. Well, Algy? The conductor says that is the telephone on the ferry. I'll phone Gwen the minute we get to Dover. Algy. What, what? You were going through the train to see if you could find the woman who had the compartment next to Nogace. And if you did find her, to see if she used the perfume we smelled in his compartment, remember? I do, now. I give up. I wish you'd make up your mind. One minute you're through, and the next you're... Well, you're trying to make some innocent woman a criminal. But we don't know that she isn't. We don't know that she is. Ah, but she could be. So could I. Why pick on her? Isn't it strange they have adjoining compartments? Oh, I suppose so. I don't know. Come in. In here, sir. We've finished, honey. Thank you, sir. All right, darling, I'll forget it. Well... I think I'll be careful, eh? Excuse me, sir. I'd give a hundred pounds to know if she is the one. I've simply got to find out. You, Drummond, if you leave here, I'll take the next train back to London. I... Oh, I'm so nervous from looking at that bag, I can scream. Please, hey, sweetheart. But, but you promised. Oh, you're right, sweet. I'm a dog. A mean, contemptible dog. You're not. Oh, yes, I am. But darling, I should know. I won't have you talk like that. There, there, sweetheart. This time I will forget it. We'll let the authorities handle it when we get to Dover, huh? <laughs> Wind this thing up. You've got to take care of Phyllis. You ready, darling? I'm beginning to live again now that we're really here. Yeah, that's the spirit. Yes. I beg your pardon, Phil. Tenny, you stay here and keep your eye on that bag until we get back. Uh, alone, sir? Alone. Come on, darling. But well, don't you think I ought to help you? Oh. Wayne, can I phone Gwen? Later, Algy, later.
I can't lose you, can I? I want to see you. No gas is on the train. You certain? As certain as I am of the fact that someone killed him. What? Some woman's my guess. You assume you'll count on all of this? Is he on the train? He's supposed to be. Park on five, car nine. Well, I haven't seen him. Have you told anybody else what's happened? No, I thought it best to keep my mouth shut. Mm, that's usually your head for once. Let's go below. Where is he? Why doesn't he come? Why ask me? I'm only his fiance. No. so certain. What was that you said about a woman? You smell jasmine in here? Yes. It was in no gas compartment, too. Kanda didn't say anything about a woman being... You know, you don't belong in this, Hugh. Oh, but I am in it. Mm, I know. I may as well tell you, I suppose. You drag it out of me anyway if I don't. To me, Okanda telephoned me at the yard about 9.35. It's too late for me to catch the train. He just received word that Yusuf Merkel, suspected on the continent of dealing in war secrets, was coming aboard when we dock at Dunkirk. It indicates that he was to meet Nogueres and make a deal for the hacks tonight. Certainly. And who's the woman? Hmm. Will you tell me? Where's Nogueres? In my car. You know, you certainly have a way of stumbling into things that don't concern you. It's a gift, Colonel. Hmm. I don't doubt it. <coughs> This isn't no gas. This isn't no gas? Well, the gas is dark. I must light a bill. You know the answer to this, don't you? Of course. This fellow, whoever he is, was in with no gas and evidently disagreed about something. Hmm. We made a detective of you, yes. Thank you. Colonel. Well? You say no gas is of slight of build? Yes. Then I've got it. The woman who killed Sumio Kanda and this fellow is no gas disguised as a woman. Well, I think you've got something there. And I'll make a bet. Wait a minute. You say you have the hacks tonight? Yes, my compartment. Let's have a look at it. Sonny, open up. Anything happen? Uh, not yet. Close the door. Easy. If that went over, it'll lift this boat out of the channel. There it is. That isn't Haxonite. What? Bath salts. That means Nogueras is on the train and has the rail hacks tonight. Captain Drummond. Yes, Tenny. May I retire, sir? Yes, go to bed. Good night, sir. Good night, Tenny. Now, I want to look in that next compartment. Why, well, was in there? A woman. How's he saw her? And if she uses the perfume we smell in the compartment adjoining hers, she's Nogueras. Have you seen this woman? No, confound it, but we're going to right now. She's in there. Jasmine. Oh, still burning. And then Nogueras just left here. We're underway. He must still be on the ship. Hmm. Somewhere on the boat, probably. Get into my compartment. If anyone enters the one next to it, come and get me. Where will I find you, sir? I'm somewhere on the ship. We're going to search it. Come on, Colonel. Whose case is this, yours or mine? Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
What is it this time? If you love me, you would have answered my telegram you received on the train. She thinks I don't love her. But if you weren't on the train, you couldn't have received it. And if you're not on the boat, you won't have to answer this one either, because if you're not on the boat, you won't get it. Nothing else? Uh, please answer. Well, you could send her a radiogram. I'll phone her right oh, now. You can't, we're underway. Underway! Oh! Hugh, we're underway, what am I going to do? You're coming with me to help find Nogaisk. But he's dead. Ah, oh, that was someone else. Nogaisk is the woman you saw in the left compartment. Now, you're the only one that knows what she... what he looks like. But I don't see you. Remember that. me, I... Captain Drummond? Darling, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. The stuff that we thought was Haxanite is only bath salt. And Nogaisk is on the boat with the rail stuff, enough to blow us all to eternity. How nice. We won't be long. You stay here and relax. Well, can't I go to my compartment? I should say not. Well, then to your compartment. You stay right here while you're safe. And to think, I'm marrying you. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but we've got to find him. Come on, Elsie. Goodbye. <laughs> We can have another look around, Colonel, but we made a thorough search. Are you certain you'd know her? Well, of course. He was wearing a... I mean, she was wearing... No, he was wearing a... Never mind, Elsie. And now, can I send Gwen a radiogram? Yes. Go ahead. When he comes back, we look again. As you wish, sir. In the meantime, I think I'll say hello to Phyllis. Nice smooth crossing, madam. Yes, very smooth. Here, put this in, too. All right, close it and put it up there. Come on. I told you not to. Put up your hands. Turn around. Sit down, Captain Drummond. You too, miss. And it seems you have the advantage, but definitely. You may lower your hands. Thank you. I believe it's customary to ask me I smoke, isn't it? I trust you have better judgment than to attempt anything foolish. I assure you, sir, my judgment is excellent. It's too bad you didn't take the brown suit. That gray doesn't become you. I like it. May I inquire what you intend to do? Under different circumstances, you and I could work well together, Drummond. You honor me, sir. <laughs> you, are you there? Just a moment, Alty. You sit there, miss. I'll be watching her, Drummond. If you're smart, you'll act as if nothing is wrong. Let him in. I don't. Smile, darling. Your gentleman needs business. What's the trouble? Trouble, Algy? You said you were coming back. Colonel Nielsen's been waiting for you. I'll tell you how I feel about it, Algy. I'm fed up with this nonsense about Nogueras and Haxton. We'll let Nielsen handle it. Uh, you're not a sick guy, old boy. No, Algy, but after all, it is the Colonel's business, not mine. Now, will you run along like a good fellow? Oh, no, this isn't like you, Hugh. One must reform sometime, Algy, and even as you pointed out, I have made Phyllis a promise. Yeah, but, but what? I, I mean, a promise, Algy. Oh, right ho. <laughs> well, cheerio. Pip, pip. Uh, pip, pip, old girl. Good night, Algie. Put up your hands. Get his gun, Tenny. Algie! Why, well, who's this? Get my gun in his pocket. Uh, no. Now get Colonel Nielsen. But don't you think that's hard? You get him. And now, you have the advantage. But definitely. Won't you sit down and lower your hands? Thank you. And to quote you, may I smoke? And to quote you, I trust you have better judgment than to attempt anything foolish. <laughs> when one loses, one loses. That sounds original. Now may I trouble you for that bag? Sure. Careful, Hexanite! Look out, sir! He's, he's gone! Hey, 
He may shoot. He hasn't got a gun. You got a gun? No. Give him yours, Alty. But then I would... Do as I tell you. Yes, but... You take that. Well, I'll take the last and search every car. You stay here and watch the door, Alty. Oh. something. Yes, darling. Come in. Will it be awful? Yes, Danny. Good night. And good night, sir. Good night. Good night. What do you want to say? Do you really mean... Come in. Sorry to leave you, Hugh. I'm escorting our friend O'Gayas to Paris. So, uh, if I'm not at Geneva for the wedding, you'll understand. I'll try to be there, Kat. You know I will. Goodbye, Phyllis. Don't scold him too much. And don't try to reform him. It's impossible. Uh -huh. Good work, old man. Thanks, Colonel. And now, darling. Do you really mean to... That will be Alty. Come in. You. Gwen's taking the plane to Paris. I'm going to see her tomorrow. That's fine, Alty. Now, good night, old chap. Phyllis is trying to tell me something. Uh, oh, yes, yes, there's a call. <laughs> right oh. Uh, trip, trip. All right, now, do I really mean... To give up this highly exciting way of living? Why, yes, dear, of course, I, I promised. It isn't necessary. Why? Because, well, as Danny says, I rather like it, sir. Darling. 